Can I turn this messy 3D model into a convincing architectural visualization using only Enscape and an AI tool like Veras? Hey everyone, my name is Steven and welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we will be using SketchUp to create our base 3D model, although you can follow along with any other 3D software that also supports Enscape. Second, we'll use Veras as our main AI tool to brainstorm and generate options in a matter of seconds before actually rendering. And finally, we will use Enscape to apply materials, refine geometry, lighting, and achieve a cool final render. Now, our main goal is to see how we can join AI with Enscape to create fast, high quality images that can improve our design workflow and save us some precious time. So first, let me show you how the raw SketchUp model of the project looks like. This model of a multi-purpose creative retreat that is nestled in the forest is composed of an open plan, double height space organized into soft, like, you know, islands of use, lounging, working, dining, etc., separated by rugs, different plants, and low furniture instead of different walls. The exposed timber frame and pitched roof structure kind of like evoke a vernacular barn typology reinterpreted through contemporary detailing, establishing warmth and rhythm overhead. And although I had a rough sketch in mind of what I wanted, I didn't actually know what steps to follow to bring this design to life. And that's where Veras comes in. And in case you have no idea, let me briefly explain how Veras works. Veras is an AI-powered visualization app for SketchUp, Revit, Rhino, and even Vectorworks. It works like a plugin inside of SketchUp that you can install, use the preset prompts, or type your own prompts, adjust your settings, and get your render. It's really, really easy to use. So the first thing I'll do is frame my project from the main angle I think it will be suited best. As you can notice, at the moment, I only have the base geometry of the building. I don't really have any materials applied since this is such a rough sketch of the building. Now I want Veras AI in this case to give me some ideas of what materiality I can apply to this type of space. So I selected a preset, went into Compose to verify the settings, and clicked on Render. And for this first result, it didn't really come out the way I expected, so I figured I should go back to the presets and select another base preset and see if that was the case. Now, the second preset had settings of an interior wooden space that was made up of a concrete floor, black highlights, and timber material. And the render that came out was this one. Although it looked pretty cool, you can see that it mixed up some metal with some wood structure. Also, it interpreted the outside as a forest, and the majority of materials were of concrete. So naturally, I went back to the first prompt preset and tried to adjust the prompt details to see what I could get. I replaced some words and made sure the material wood was there. I replaced the words modern design for Scandinavian design. I inserted the words tropical forest into the prompt, and I also started increasing the geometry override slider. This slider will indicate the amount that the geometry will change from the original model. A low value will give you the exact geometry, while higher values can change the geometry but have more creative outputs. Now, the result was not that good, so I turned on the atmospheric and cinematic option, increased the material override so the AI can give different results than the original image, and this is what I got. Now, as you can see, I'm getting much closer to the idea that I have in my head, and the prompt adjustment is more precise. And it's also giving me some ideas on how I should probably handle the concrete floor, the wood structured ceiling, with perhaps letting some light go through and the staircase as a concrete monolithic volume that can be the main protagonist in the space. Then came an inflection point of this workflow. I decided to refine my prompt structure with ChatGPT and see if maybe another AI could help me get more creative results without too much iteration. So I took a screenshot of the render, of this AI render, and placed it into ChatGPT and asked it to give me a prompt to use in Veras AI that describes this same space only that much cozier with some plants inside, a library, concrete floors, etc. Also, I specified to make this prompt a description with individual words and not complex sentences. And with this prompt that ChatGPT gave me, I copied it and pasted it onto Veras to see 
what it would give me. And the result was much more detailed and specific, but I tried it again and tried to refine the prompt to see if maybe I could start controlling some things that I didn't like, like the skylights and the overall feel and mood of the space. And with the prompt that it gave me and I copied into Veras, I received this result, which looked so, so good. It was much closer to what I had in mind at the beginning. The majority of its materiality was warm. The staircase stood out, but didn't seem as heavy as before. And the furniture also had some vibes of a multi-purpose space where someone can work in. Now with this the result in line with what I wanted, I started refining my prompt much more, deleting words that I thought were adding elements that I didn't want want in the image and adding other words. I also started pumping out more and more renders and at the same time all of these different images were giving me ideas that I could riff off of so of course there were some elements that I didn't have in mind and brainstorming with Veros AI gave me some cool ideas to include as well as the light and materiality of the space. The best thing about this process was the speed. On average, each render I received took about 20 seconds more or less. Of course, this is not a render I would use to present my projects. It doesn't always follow the geometry and sometimes can have some inconsistencies. But this is something that I can use as a sketchbook, a brainstorming tool to create dozens of ideas in an hour and with the strongest ones, start refining my work. Then of course, for fun, I also decided to imagine in the same space in a bunch of different styles just to test the capabilities of Veras and see what it was capable of and how it can reinterpret my geometry in different ways. The results were all really cool and all really creative. It's crazy to think that all of this was done within SketchUp. In the end, I selected a few of my favorite images. Now with the brainstorm that I'd done in Veras, I opened Enscape and the plan was to add materials, refine geometry, lighting, and environments to match the ideas that were sketched out and see what new ones sparked up. So as always, I first started by adding materials from the Enscape material library. So I went to the Enscape material library, searched for concrete, downloaded it, and applied it to my model. I repeated this for all of the floor areas and then did the same thing for the wooden structure in my design. Now, if you've seen any of my past videos on applying materials within Enscape, you know I usually like to download a high quality material from sites like Polygon and apply them to my model. In this case, for time purposes, I applied the same wood material everywhere, but ideally you would have at least two different types of wood textures applied so there can be some visual richness in detail in each image. Other materials that I applied were the metal framing of the windows, the glass in each window, the white walls, and the concrete stairs. Now this is what the 3D model looks like without any materials and this is what it looks like with specific materials. As you can see, it starts to get a certain personality and scale that help understand the space much more. Then after applying the basic materials, I went on to adding all of the exterior vegetation. Now, since this design is situated in a place surrounded by vegetation and trees, I imported a tree skyline from the SketchUp 3D warehouse, and then I started importing vegetation from the Enscape asset library. So starting from the big trees outside that will project some nice soft shadows in the interior, I placed each of them strategically for them not to block the light, but give an idea of what the outside looks like. Then I passed on to adding the interior plants that are in this grand space. I really think one of the keys for variety and magic to happen is to add a lot of plants, even in places that you think aren't going to be seen as much. Sometimes when the camera is at a certain angle, you can somehow see white or void spaces that look kind of weird and plants and different elements help disguise this kind of weirdness. Then I went on to adding lower vegetation on the outside of the building again. As I modeled this, I had the Enscape render window on a separate monitor so I could see how each element looked like from the actual frame that I was going to render it in. Now, of course, this is one of the most lengthy steps of the whole process. Here, it's really a matter of patience and trying to enjoy placing different objects around the scene. In the final render, you will be able to see that this attention to detail and excessive amount of elements is what sometimes makes the space feel real and inhabited. 
to make Enscape run much faster, I also went on and turned off all the additional effects in the visual settings like wind, motion blur, bloom, lens flare, and turned the sun brightness all the way to one so I can have these soft shadows that look so much better. Now, before continuing adding the different furniture and elements, I went on to look at my AI images done with Veras again. I wanted to see and understand what elements perhaps made the space in the images look cozy, warm, minimal, and just much more interesting. So things like a sofa, desks, wooden chairs, elements over everything were the things that I thought I had to include to make my final model look so much better. So I went to open the asset library within SketchUp and started adding different elements in my space. Now I usually start going category by category and adding it to the model according to what I feel looks and works best. So I would go into the vegetation category and, and again add some bushes, tall plants, etc. So this is what the space looks like before adding all the vegetation and this is what it looks like after all the vegetation is added including interior and exterior plants. So as you can see, the difference is huge and nature is a huge plus in this space and in the majority of spaces that you create. Next, I started adding different furniture. So I went into the asset library, selected, for example, this sofa and imported it into my model. I placed it, rotated it, and I adjusted its position until I found how it looked better. I started adding in bulk all the furniture I feel the space could use, placing it all in the same area, and then readjusting it to wherever I had imagined it beforehand. And as you can see in the render preview, the space starts to be understood so much more and just looks so much better. Now, I always recommend having one main point of view that you believe will be the main point of view for your strongest render or image and leaving it always in frame while you're adding different elements. Sometimes you can get distracted adding a ton of different things, not really knowing if this will appear or benefit the final image or not. So as you can see, all of the elements I was adding, adjusting and repositioning had the main view right to the side to see if it worked on the image or if it didn't work. And of course, after adding the main furniture, you need to add the little elements and details that make this image pop. So glasses, books, papers, food, shoes, clothes, rugs, candles, art frames, you name it. This is also one of the cool things about using the Enscape library. Uh, the library is huge and you can import these elements in an easy and fast way and see if it reflected instantly in the final image. So I'll try to speed this part up because it's more of the same, you know, just like adding different elements and seeing where they would fit best. Now, the next big step was opening the visual settings within an Enscape and starting to adjust the final images, trying to see what visual settings worked best for this project. So for example, things like adjusting the field of view, the exposure settings, the depth of field and specific focus points are the first things you need to adjust to have a good realistic render. Then you can start looking at elements like fog, maybe a very subtle fog can also add some depth to your image. And as I mentioned earlier, leaving the sun brightness at a value of only one gives me the lowest shadows that can give me this soft shadow effect that is really, really cool in renders. And also I added an HDRI to the skybox and I had to adjust the position of the sun so it could shine on some important elements like the image, the stairs, main furniture, etc. and not on elements that I didn't really want to show. I talk much more on how to achieve some realistic lighting effects in this video that I did a while ago in Enscape. But as you can see, with some subtle adjustments to the image, it looks so much better. So this was the image before the furniture and this is after. What a crazy difference, right? It's crazy to see how placing some interesting elements in your image just improves it so much. And after this, I added some vines that dropped from the second floor. Probably a little too much, but I mean, come on, this is before the vines and this is after the vines. So they just look so good in this render. And after having this basic job done, I went again into Veras, but this time from within the same Enscape window. So I went into the Enscape viewport, clicked on the Veras button. I verified that the view was going to be rendered and the prompt was okay. And then I rendered an image. Here, as you can see, I get an extremely textured and 
interesting AI render. This time it's giving me some ideas on lighting and also grabbing the materials that were applied and making them have much more contrast in different spaces. So here I go back to the prompt, adjust the prompt, lower the material override and geometry override and render the image. And the second result is a little bit better with some ideas here and there that I can grab for my own design and some things that maybe I don't really need for this specific scenario. Now, after grabbing some final ideas for mood and lighting test, I went back onto Enscape for some final tweaks and rendered the images. And well, this was the final render that I created with Enscape. I did a little bit of color and texture adjustment within Photoshop, but the majority of hard work was done within Enscape and of course, with the help of an AI tool like Veras AI. So this was the model before adding anything. This was the set of AI images that I created with Veras in the brainstorming phase to see what I could add. And this was the final Enscape render. Pretty cool, right? Now, overall, I think we should all learn to use AI in a way that makes us super architects, speeds up our workflow, and makes our results with programs like Enscape so much better, 10 times better. There are many specific tools within Veras and within Enscape that you can use to enhance your final project and refine little details. So I really suggest you go over to Chaos and download both programs and start testing it out for yourself. I would love to hear what you think of this workflow. Are you using Veras? Are you using Enscape? Let me know in the comment section of this video. I'd love to know. Also, I'd love to thank Chaos for sponsoring this video and making these cool videos possible. It's thanks to sponsors like Chaos that I can keep creating free content for you all and test out all the different tools for you to see. Now, what AI tools should I test next? Let me know in the comments. As always, if you want to see more Enscape videos or videos on AI, click on this playlist right here. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and like this video. It really helps me in knowing if you like these videos or not. Subscribe and hit the like button. Don't worry, I'll wait. Just kidding. It's been a pleasure as always, and I will see you in the next video. As always, stay creative. Bye.